I swear to you, my fupa has never ached so bad. Oh, don't you just love oversharing? I am smart. I am smart. Literally just step in group. <laughs> and just tell you, don't be like me and don't do what I did this pregnancy. No, the teacher told me. I can't be the only one who lets my insecurities control me sometimes. Because life is so much more. He's so freaked out of my umbrella right now. He's so scared of my umbrella right now. Good boy. Boy. Stay. Yeah, he's wet. Wet dog stink. Look at his Break. Good boy. There. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Drop. Hello and good morning. I wanted to show you guys this vanity thing I got. Obviously, it's a little dark in this room, especially today. I did not sleep. I need to freshen up a little bit. My sister put me on this yesterday and I'm obsessed already. I'm gonna show you guys how great this is going on so we can liven up my face because mama's not been getting any sleep. My skin looks really bad in the camera, but it's not, not that bad. I don't know why it's uh... Here's my skin before. It looks a little red because I'm sweating and just washed my face really thoroughly. I like to build this up. This mirror. It's from Vanity Planet. Tiffany Beeston posted about it on her Instagram. Wanted to support one of my faves, but also I really did need something like this because it's just so dark in here. <laughs> but my makeup always ends up streaky. So this stuff starts out green and it just matches any skin color you put it on. So whether you're pale like me, black, white, Asian, I guess it just works for everybody. No matter your ethnicity, I think it will work for you, which I love that for us. No this stuff, the way it feels on your face is just like lightweight and smooth. Like it mattifies your face a little bit, but not to where it like dries you out. Princess, are you getting ready for school today? Okay, what's on your notes right here? I am smart. I am smart. Say, I am strong. I am strong. I am kind. I am kind. Say, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Good job. And what's that one say right there? I love kitty. Yes. <laughs> Those are your affirmations, huh? Hey, I, I need some help. It is long here. I can't believe it. Rose, look at Mama say cheese. Yes. How old are you? Four now. Yeah. <laughs> My big school girl. Give me a kiss. Yes, I love it. Catch him. Put in your heart. I did. So what, Yabby? It's not a goblin. It's not a goblin? Are you sure? No, it's um. Literally just stepped into <laughs> Rosalie. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness, Daddy cleaned it off for us. <laughs> Let's take your first day of school picture. Today's been just crazy. Oh, clean. <laughs> Good job. Okay. And to listen to your teacher as well, okay? Okay, I will listen. Rose, you can't be going to school. That's okay, I'll come back soon. You will promise? I promise. 
promise? Oh, are we doing a pinky promise? Where's your pinky? Kiss it. Okay, baby. I love you. I love you. Happy first day of school. Thanks, Mom. Bye-bye. Kiss. Mm. Mm. Take okay, baby. How was your first day of school? Come here. Good. It was good? Yeah. Is that how you learned about stuff? Yeah. Does your dog teach you? No. The teacher told me. Oh, the teacher told you? Yeah. What did you learn about today? Let me show you the song. Tickle toes, tickle, 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 tickle nose. Tickle toes, tickle, 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 tickle toes. Really? Tickle yeah. nose, tickle toes? Yeah. Oh. That's, that's the song? Yeah. That sounds great. I'm so happy. And we fall down and that was clap hands and stomp feet. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sounds fun. That was a good song. It was a good song? And the nose tickled toes too. Oh, I'm so glad you had a good day. I missed you. <laughs> I came back very soon. You did come back. I'm so and glad. And there was babies there sleeping. There was babies. Oh my goodness. So you had to be really quiet when you walked yeah, by? Yeah, so I could go potty. You had to go potty? Yeah. You did a good job. Did you tell someone you had to go potty? Yeah. yeah. It was my teacher. This is my Bye, Allison. See you later. Can you come out of my house? She says, can you come out of my house? <laughs> later. Later, can you come out of my house? Tickle, 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 those. Tickle nose, tickle, 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 tickle head, tickle fingers, tickle, 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 tickle head, tickle toes, tickle, 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 tickle nose, tickle toes, tickle, 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 tickle nose. Tell Daddy about the tickle toes. It's the new one I was talking about this year. I was looking for a song like that. You were looking for a song like that years ago? Yeah. Years ago. <laughs> I heard it, Rose. That's so cool. Right? Let me show you another one. It was clapping your hands. Oh, it was clapping your hands? Yep. And stomping our feet. And let me tell Granny now. You want to call her? Granny! Um, um, How was your first day, Rose? Um, <laughs> and let me show you the new song. Tickle, 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 nose. Tickle toes. And let me show you the Epsy Bisky Spider one. Epsy Bisky Spider came up the water spout. Up came the rain and washed the spider out. Up came the sun and dried up all the rain. Oh no! It's a fuzzy spider now! <laughs> and the Coco Melon New Aubrey. She watched a new Aubrey this morning. Yep, it was a Coco Melon Aubrey. And oh. it was a creepy Coco Melon with creepy eyes. Like, oh. Oh, creepy eyes. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm too pregnant for this. It's the next day. Rosalie is at her second day of school. You know what, you guys? I just realized, like, I'm gonna have to get dressed every day. Like, I'm gonna have to take my pajamas off before 3 p.m. Ooh. Do you guys like my eyelashes? I've been doing DIY lash extensions from Lilac Street. They stay on for a week, and I will not ever be going back. If you want to know more about that, let me know. I wanted to update you guys on something that I think is really important to talk about. But first, I have a story. I swear to you, my fupa has never ached so bad. <laughs> Bear, our Australian Shepherd, he's very good for Zach. Very good. Doesn't pull him at all. Which Zach works with him more, so it's to be expected. Unless I put the prong collar on him, which is like the one that puts a little pressure on their neck, he will pull me like crazy. So I don't always put that on him right away in the mornings. One beautiful morning last week, I took him out. He was pulling really hard, so I tried to give him a little pop to remind him that I'm too pregnant for this shit. And I must have just pulled at just the right angle, like down here, 
and somehow I pulled every crotch muscle that I own. <laughs> every single one. And for some reason, my inner thighs have just already been hurting. Everything hurts this pregnancy, which is something I wanna to talk to you guys about and just tell you, don't be like me and don't do what I did this pregnancy because it's been so much harder than my first pregnancy, which I'm not sure if the second pregnancy is just harder because your pelvic floor is less springy and it's already been through this once and so the baby just feels more heavy because I'm just talking like my inner thighs and then my it's not like my actual god oh don't you just love oversharing mm-hmm I know I do it's okay you guys are my friends we're all friends here <laughs> You know, I gotta be honest, I have been a little bit emotional the past couple days with Rosalie being gone and she's about to be no longer an only child and obviously I'm literally so, I'm like fanning my legs, it's really hot in here. I'm obviously so excited for baby boy to get here I, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared shit list because I am. Having to sounds really scary and it will be scary. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be hard, it'll be all those things, but obviously worth it. And I'm just like so excited, so nervous, so nervous for labor. Having this support system around us that we do will be so much better than if we were in Wisconsin by ourselves. But emotionally, I am not necessarily a wreck by any means. I'm really not an emotional or like anxious person person I kind of take things as they come to me and just have faith that everything's gonna work out I believe that I'm exactly where I'm meant to be at all times everything is happening to teach me the lessons I need to learn to become the person I need to be to serve the people I need to serve and just being open to the flow of life and that's like kind of my motto and that's just how I am I don't think I'm gonna be able to stop fanning this whole video so if that bothers you just click out now because your bitch is hot <laughs> Yeah, any life changes are, they make you nervous. With one baby, it's just like you can give them all your attention, you can rest when they're resting. And Rosalie obviously was a newborn and an only child. I didn't have to worry about getting another kid off for school. And like for me, I, I don't know if I should even go into this right now, but I put a lot of pressure on myself to like, I guess be good looking. I wish I truly believed that I was a 10 at all times, but that's a part of me that I need to work on because when I don't have myself put together, I don't feel confident at all, which is hard for me to admit because I'm kind of a confident gal, but not right now, I'm really not. And especially after I'm postpartum, there's gonna be a lot of emotions. I struggled with postpartum anxiety and a little depression with Rosalie. Self-care is really important to me and feeling confident is really important to me, but I do put too much pressure on myself to be, to present myself in a certain way, I guess. And sometimes that can get in the way of just, man, I mean, I can't be the only one who lets my insecurities control me sometimes more often than I'd like to admit. And that's something I'm working on letting go of and just, cause life is so much more than how others perceive you and your image. Like it's just really not that important. And I have to actively remind myself of that. Cause I think social media, social media is insidious you guys. And that's why I try and show up imperfectly as often as I can because normal people can't relate to perfection anyway. I know I can't, I'm certainly not perfect. <laughs> But on a real note, I not I mean these have all been real notes, but I'm really looking forward to getting back to taking care of my body in the way that it deserves and feeling good in my skin again, which is just very hard. That's a big challenge when you're pregnant because everything's changing and you get new stretch marks with the second, at least I have, <laughs> on my butt cheeks. In case you wanted to know. And like the back of my calves even, that one was hard. I mean, I've gained about the same amount of weight, I think. Maybe a little bit more, but it's because I've been eating like a dummy. The biggest struggle for me right now is like, I just don't feel proud of the decisions that I'm making. I truly do feel like a deep kind of shame about the way I've been treating my body. 
I think once you've achieved a certain level of energy and vitality and you know what's possible for you, what you eat affects your energy levels. I hate to break it to you, but if you're eating garbage, you're gonna feel like garbage and that is literally facts. But once, once you have reached that level, of energy and you know how vibrant you can feel just like on a day-to-day -day basis. When I was not eating fast food or dairy and I was lifting weights five days a week, yeah, I felt freaking fantastic. And I was proud of myself, which is what's really important. It doesn't really matter what other people think. You wanna feel proud of yourself. Am I right? I know I'm right, so you don't have to tell me. <laughs> so regressing in your health and basically leveling down beneath the level you know you're capable of living at is very hard to accept. It's like actually physically painful and just mentally painful to experience. Letting yourself, because it's an active choice. It's been an active choice. I could have stayed active during this pregnancy and that's something I want to urge you to do if you're newly pregnant, planning on getting pregnant, please, Please don't be like me this pregnancy and just stop. I mean, I've exercised and lifted weights like three, four times maybe. And it started with the pandemic. I mean, having childcare in your gym is, it's like a non-negotiable. If you can do that, it's just so much easier to commit to going because you have that time to yourself. Whereas here or at the apartment, I would have had to recruit somebody to watch Rosalie for me. And I'm a stay at home, work from home mom. And so adding that to my plate without a reliable childcare source is just like, those are excuses. I still could have made it happen, but I just wasn't in a season where I mentally wanted to do that because I'm obviously in a season of pregnancy right now. And that's hard and I've made every effort to be gentle with my body and loving through all the many changes that pregnancy brings. But even the most body positive of us, that's hard for us. It doesn't matter how body positive you are. Pregnancy is hard and the changes are hard. You're not gonna think it's all beautiful all the time, unfortunately. It's just a lot to accept and postpartum is gonna be even more so. And especially like I try not to put too many expectations on my body because I know what I achieved. My first time being postpartum was incredible, but who's to say that things won't be a little bit different or harder this time? They could be easier because I'll have more tools that I didn't have the first time around and I know what not to do this time. But yeah, please don't be like me and stop exercising during your second pregnancy or just any pregnancy, I guess any pregnancy, just please do your best to stay active and make good food choices even though, even though it's easier to make bad choices when you're pregnant because your body's gonna be growing anyway. There's nothing you can do about the growing tummy and so it just feels like, oh, well, who cares if I just eat what I want? I'm pregnant, I'm gonna, my body's expected to grow. But do yourself a favor because you will feel, you will feel horrible if you do that to yourself. Keep working out or start slowly working out if you don't already, like just start doing some squats around the house. For me, I struggle with perfectionism around exercise. If I can't go smash out a two hour gym session, I won't do it. And that's why during the pandemic, I didn't realize this was a sneaky perfectionism that I had. I didn't do anything because I couldn't do everything. If I couldn't go smash a super intense two hour gym session, then who, what's the point? Well, obviously the point of exercise is to stay in shape and to feel that vibrance that I talked about earlier. I just think if I'm not lifting weights and I'm not doing something crazy every time, which is what I did for five days a week, and of course that's awesome, but something is better than nothing. And I don't know why I all of a sudden had this all or nothing uh, mentality around working out. I should have just done something. But the pandemic, it was hard on all of us. So I'm here to give myself grace. I hope you guys give yourself grace as well. But hopefully you'll still take my advice and just treat your body right, pregnant or not because you'll feel better, like a lot better. It doesn't have to be perfect. Your choices don't have to be perfect. Your eating doesn't have to be perfect, but just move your body and eat a vegetable. 
<laughs> every once in a while, which I still eat my vegetables, but I just eat a lot of other things too that I don't need to. And pregnancy was my excuse. I'm 36 weeks pregnant. I've got four weeks to go. I am trying not to wish away the rest of this pregnancy because it's my last one. Of course it's gonna be hard. I'm in the last stretch, uh, but man, I am tired. My whole body hurts. I heard Erin Williams talking about this on her story and that's what prompted me to like share my experience too because she's so right. This is her fourth baby and she said with her other pregnancies she was more active and this time she's not been active at all and making bad choices with her eating and she's felt like garbage. And so I'm telling you, if you can take really good care of your body while you're pregnant, you'll be doing yourself a favor in the last trimester, especially because your body is taking a freaking beating. Your pelvic floor is taking a beating for nine months. <laughs> so yeah, that's enough on that. I'm gonna end this vlog here. Hope you enjoyed this. If there's anything you guys wanna see from me before this baby boy comes, please leave it down in the comments below. And if you think that this would be helpful for a pregnant mama that you know or someone who's trying to conceive uh, please share it with them it really helps my channel I'm trying to grow a tribe like I'm just manifesting a tribe of moms that just get each other and don't judge each other and cheer each other on because motherhood's hard and we shouldn't have to do it alone so if you want to be friends make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video because YouTube will not let you know unless you hit that bell give this video a thumbs up because it super supports my channel and leave a comment down below and pray for me <laughs> pray for my fupa <laughs> okay that's enough I gotta go bye <laughs>